I am sitting in front of Hobby Lobby and I have not been in this store since the shutdown. So for me, that has been since March, I believe. So it is time. I am about to go in here. I'm going to take you with me because I want to show you around the fabric section just to see what they have. I have no idea what they have, what's new, what's old. So we're going to go see together.
so I was good and I did not purchase any fabric I actually have a shirt in mind that I want to make but I want to make it in white and I didn't really see any white like solid white that I wanted to get other than like a hundred percent cotton but I'm kind of thinking I want another eyelid fabric so I'm gonna take a look at Joann's and kind of browse I may not do it today but I want to just kind of look and get a little idea of what they have before I actually make a purchase so I didn't get anything but it was nice shopping around to see what they have and they had some things in there that they still had from March so that was interesting but I'm glad you were able to come along with me and I will go home and I'm sure I will have a sewing make to share with you so stay tuned for that okay so I gave in. I ended up going to Joann Fabrics because I kept thinking about it and thinking about it and I wanted to see what they had. So I ended up purchasing 100% cotton, but it's the specialty cotton and it's really pretty. So I hope you can see it, but it has this like threading. I don't know what you would call it, but it's, can I? Oh, there it goes. Yeah, the threading, like, I don't know if that's embroidery or just what, but it's like floral. And I thought that was so pretty. And so I want to make a button-up shirt. And I did purchase some, some buttons also. I don't know if that's going to show up. But yeah, I don't think I can get the buttons to show up. But they're just kind of like frosty looking buttons. Yeah, that's not going to show. But anyway, I bought buttons and I bought this fabric and that's it. And I'm going to go home and get started on this project. And I'm really excited, as I always say. So does this fabric look familiar? I actually made the top or the shirt, if you want to call it that. It is a button-up shirt. So I am excited. I really, really love the way it turned out. So this is Butterick 6563 and I made view C. So let me tell you some of the features in the pattern. It does have bust and waist darts. There are buttons and a collar. And then there's gathering around the cap sleeve and also around the cuff area. This pattern is rated easy. Now the front piece and the facing is all in one piece. However, you are supposed to interface the facing. So what I did was I traced the facing off of the front of the pattern piece and then I used that to make a, I guess, a pattern so that I can cut out the interfacing. So that was one thing that I had to do in order to get the, the front facing interfaced. Also on the diagram for cutting out piece 10, the diagram shows that you should cut out the piece twice, but you actually only need one piece cut out on the fold. So that was kind of an error that was in the diagram. The changes that I made, I did not add the front pocket on the shirt. Now I have the shirt tucked in because that's how I like to wear it. If I make it again, I will lengthen it. Shirt was a little bit short on me. So this is the front, and then I'll show you the back. I really, really like the shirt. I like the collar, and I love the way that the directions had you to put the collar in. It was a different way that I'd never done before. So I thought it was really, really cool. Cool technique. My next garment is a dress. It is New Look 6510. Now this was a really easy make and I made this dress a long time ago, at least a year or two ago I believe. Some of the features in this pattern, the dress has front darts and then there are ties that you make to go in the back of the dress which I thought was really, really cute and they are adjustable so you can tie them and make them as tight or as loose as you want them to be. Now. I did find that I had to wear a special bra under the dress because of the straps. The bra that I would normally wear would show in the strap area. So I just ended up wearing my bustier, so it came in handy. The directions did not have, or I did not see in the directions where they explained how to finish off the raw ends of the straps. So what I did was I just folded the raw end in two times 
folded it in twice and then hand stitched it down just to kind of finish the raw edge other than that it was a really simple simple make and I took this dress with me out of town I hope you all can hear me I'm gonna try to get a little close to the camera because I forgot my microphone so anyway my husband and I decided to take a road trip and we drove to Arizona we're actually in the Phoenix area we're in a city called Glendale I have never been here before so we are going to explore and just hang out and have a good time what's really nice is the weather is so beautiful it's supposed to be 91 degrees today I love hot weather so I'm going to show you what I am planning to wear today which is the new look dress that I talked about previously so I made it in this kind of floral print and I actually found this fabric from a store in my neighborhood so well it's kind of in my neighborhood it's it's about 30 minutes away from where I live so I call it my neighborhood but not really but yeah it's not online or anything it's just a little small shop but I saw this floral fabric I think it's like a linen and I'm gonna show this dress to you I think it's perfect for this weather and it has you know the straps in the back where it ties yes yeah, so I cannot wait to get ready and show you what this dress looks like on we actually arrived here last night and it was kind of scary because when we first pulled up there were police everywhere and we were like what's going on so we rolled our window down to ask how we can get into the hotel because it was kind of blocked off and the police officer said that everything was on lockdown we were like huh <laughs> so anyway it turned out I don't know what was going on but it was okay they just had to reroute us to help us get into the hotel a, a, a different way so we were able to get in get safe and everything was fine so yes I'm going to go get changed and I will share with you what my dress looks like on okay so they had this grab and go breakfast bags so let's see what's in here bottle of water an apple a muffin and an energy bar not bad So I had a really great time in Arizona and while I was there I did stop at Savers because I wanted to see what I could find and I didn't find much but I did find this fabric which is like a tinsel rayon fabric I really like it and it is a lot of fabric that I purchased I like the color it's kind of like a light olive if that makes any sense but yes I really love this I have no idea what I'm gonna make from it and I got all this fabric for around six dollars so yes I'm excited because I was running low on fabric but this will keep me going for a little while so before I go I want to leave you with a love share and let me pull it out of my pocket here because I need to read it all right so I don't know if you've ever noticed the round indentations on the side of some gallons of milk like the milk jug I'll put a picture to show you what I mean well I learned recently that the round indentations on the side of the plastic milk jugs they are there to allow the jug to expand slightly to accommodate extra air 
So if you notice the indentations are poking outward, your milk may be spoiled from bacteria in the milk that introduces gases that increase pressure inside the jug. That is so good to know. So yes, I had to pass that along and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would love to know you can click on the little thumb that's sticking up below.